Let's take a quick look at the Unlabeled Bottles Lab. What we need to do is make sure that we have collected our data correctly, that we are looking at both our knowns and our unknowns, that you are using the results from the reactions of the knowns, your precipitate. Um, in this case, you would have no reaction because um, in the case of sodium chloride plus calcium chloride, you might have no reaction. You identify your unknowns from the comparison of the knowns to the unknowns, and then you need to write some equations. So for example, I think everyone got a precipitate when they reacted calcium chloride with sodium carbonate. So let's write the reactions for that one. When we're looking at this, we want three different reactions. Now how these are named is really text dependent, um, but nonetheless, we're gonna use what we call a molecular equation. In a molecular equation, you're going to write everything in its original formula and not worry about how it's actually present, whether or not electrolyte, et cetera, in solution. So we're going to write everything intact in its formula. When we write the complete ionic, we're going to take anything that's aqueous. And remember, this is all ionic. So if we put aqueous in an ionic compound, that means it's inherently soluble, and we're going to break into ions. And when we look at our net ionic equation, we are going to identify the spectators, and we're going to identify and remove the spectators. And we need to make certain that we have the charges written, that the reaction is balanced, and we have all the phases. So if I start out with sodium carbonate and calcium chloride. So I have sodium carbonate. Now, when they say that we need to make sure that we have all the phases, that means we have to look back to our solubility rules. We know from our solubility rules that all compounds that contain sodium are soluble. So we're gonna put an AQ there and it is soluble in water. We're gonna react it with calcium chloride Chlorides are mostly soluble. Calcium is not one of our insoluble um, exceptions. Remember, these are in our solubility rules. These are all going to be double replacement reactions, which means we're just going to swap what's attached to what. When we do this, we've got to make sure we have the right formulas. So sometimes I go straight down to the complete ionic from here and break stuff apart so I don't do kind of silly things with these twos down here on that sodium. So with this in mind, if I take and write the complete ionic, which means that we break it into its component ions, I'm going to have two sodiums. Note this is ionic. I need to include the charge. Sodium is just the cation, soluble in water. I'm going to put an AQ because it's dissolved. I'm going to react it with the carbonate or put the carbonate here. Remember, carbonate is 2 minus aqueous. I'm going to put in my calcium. Calcium is group 2, 2 plus. And it has chlorine or chloride with it, realizing that chloride is a monatomic anion. So that two goes in the front and I'm going to have two Cl minuses aqueous. I did this to remind myself that when I put my formulas together on the right side, the product side of my reaction, I need to think about what I'm putting together. I'm going to put together the calcium and the carbonate and I'm going to make calcium carbonate. And remember, in our total equation, our total molecular, we put everything intact, even if it really is soluble. My sodium, I'm going to put with my chloride. That two is going to go in front because the correct ratio for sodium chloride is one to one. And that's going to be my formula. Now I'm going to need to apply the solubility rules. All group one compounds, sodium compounds are soluble. Calcium carbonate is insoluble. Most carbonates are insoluble. And that is going to be the solid implying it's an insoluble ionic compound. So we have the complete molecular written. Now we need to do the complete ionic and the net ionic. I've already got my complete ionic started here. So this is equation one, this is two. In my complete ionic, if it's soluble, I break it into ions. If it's insoluble, we're going to leave it intact. So if I look at my product side, calcium carbonate is our precipitate. It is not soluble. It is a solid. So I'm going to write it as a solid. 
and I'm going to react it or put here my plus, my sodium chloride, all group one compounds are soluble. So I'm going to leave that as that 2Na plus aqueous plus 2Cl minus aqueous. And now I have my complete ionic equation. I need to do my last part here, which means I need to take, identify the spectators. You remember the spectators are not involved. They're in the same state on both sides of this. And I need to remove them to write my net ionic. So my net ionic is what actually happens. So what actually happens here is my carbonate finds a calcium and makes calcium carbonate. What does the sodium chloride do? Absolutely nothing. It is a spectator. It is Na plus on this side, Cl minus on both sides, and it's just sitting there. It is not involved in this reaction. So my net ionic is going to be carbonate, aqueous, plus calcium, aqueous, goes into calcium carbonate as a solid. And that is a net ionic. You need to write this for every reaction that you observed. So you need to do this for any precipitate that you have. If it forms heat or if you get bubbles, if you're not sure what some of these equations are, please just go back a few pages in here and realize that we have given you some hints on this one, page one, where's page one? There you go. Three indicators of reactions. Think about the fact that you're going to make, your bubbles is gonna be carbon dioxide as a gas. All right, that's what you need to do on that one. The last question that we ask you on this lab is to look at these. My advice would be to actually kind of draw these out so that imagine you have your possibilities and think about what's going to happen when you add, in this case, silver nitrate. So we have, we're gonna add silver nitrate. We're gonna add it to each of these three possible unknowns. Think about what a reaction is, apply your solubility rules and make sure you explain your logic as to which your unknown possibly is.